Hello everyone, today I'm here to review for you Coyote, a relatively new and last couple of years game from Huddle Bear. This is in their sort of same line as Spicy, which you might be able to see the very shininess of the box, that sort of metallic bronzy sort of colour with Spicy in the same line having that gold look. This is a very quick bluffingy sort of game for three to six players. Let's roughly go through how it plays. Then I'll give you my thoughts and feelings, and just so you're aware, it was provided to me as a review copy. So how does the game play? Well, there's going to be a card in front of each player that they can't see, they can see everyone else's, as well as one card face down in the middle of the table. You are trying to make a bid of a number that is high, but not higher than the sum of all of the cards. There's a couple of special cards that impact things and you know, make it a little bit more interesting, such as some negative cards. But effectively, you're trying to say like, oh, I can see a num few, nu few of the numbers, I'm going to say 16, and then it goes on to the next player's turn. On your turn, you do also, if you've got some peak cards available, you can spend one of those by flipping it over to have a look at that card that's face down in the middle. That just gives you that bit more information. However, if you do that, you must increase the bid. So you kind of hope that that doesn't have minus 10 when you're having a peak. If it does though, that's when you're like, oh yeah, sure, I can increase it by like five and maybe bluff your next, the next opponent into either having a look, so they must increase the bid, or just generally increasing it. Remember, you can't see what your number is. It could be really high, it could be really low. You're only going on what you can see, and if you know that central card in the middle. So you've said a number, and then it's on to the next player's turn. They can either increase the bid, or they can call it, and sort of say, actually, I think, the number that all the cards add up to is going to be lower than that. At this point, you reveal all the cards in the standard mode and see if you're right or wrong. The person that wins that challenge, well, they get to turn one of their face down peak cards back up so they can have a look and have a peek in a later round. And the person that loses the challenge, they have to put one of those peak cards back into the box. They're effectively then for used also as your lives, because once you've got none left, you're eliminated from the game. The game goes until there's one player left and they win the game. Now, I said there was advanced mode and there is. It doesn't add too much and I really would recommend it. So in this, when that challenge goes down, everyone else around the table, counting down from three, two, one, basically points at who they think is going to win the challenge. And you're effectively bidding it or sort of saying, if I'm right, I get to also turn over one of my peak cards, but uh, as in to the good side, if you can use it again, or if you're wrong, you picked the wrong side of the challenge, you have to turn one of your face up peak cards down. So you, you're losing that option of looking at the middle card. You're not discarding one from the game, you're not losing a life, it's only the person that loses the challenge that still loses that life. But that is that part of it. There's also another card introduced, which is a special coyote card where you put a card in the middle and it go, that coyote goes on top only the person that lost the last round can look at that card. Not only does it mean there's an additional card in play, there's also that bit of information that only the person that lost the last round knows. Slightly a bit of a catch-up mechanism in there, and the pointing part makes the advanced rules more fun. So that is roughly how you play the game, and Let's just touch on something that I did skip a, over a little bit, some of the special cards, as that's what gets this game going. So there are two special cards, and then there's also a few negative ones, such as negative 5 and negative 10. And they just mean, well, the rest of the numbers that are between 1 and 20, well, even if, like, 15 is out, it could still be a really low number if those negatives are also in play. Remembering you can't see what your card is, so if the numbers are really low, was mine the minus 10? Well, there's also a couple of other cards to throw into the mix that are always shuffled in. The first one is a question mark. 
Now, that just means when it comes to the challenge, you turn the top card of the deck over and replace that question mark. So it adds a little bit of extra risk into the round. The other card is incredible if you can see it because it really gives you a lot of information and maybe screws other people over is the zero max card. Now what this does is it zeroes the highest card, the maximum high card. So the 20 is out, but so is that card. That means the 20 is completely zeroed out and not included when you're totaling the number up. And that can massively change what you think the highest number is going to be when you're doing that bidding and when you're going to actually call someone out and go, there's no way you're going to turn like be able to turn the cards over and they total 15 because I can see something maybe you can't. So if it wasn't for those negatives and those two special cards I think the rounds would feel samey or it would ne wouldn't necessarily work. The negatives really mix things up and you know mean that some bids are going to be a lot lower and those two special cards, they don't come out too often, but when they do, they either add the risk of the question mark or massively reduce the total that the bids are gonna get to. And when one of those is in that face card, the, the face down card in the middle of the table, it's super great when you've peeked at it and you're looking around the table going, I know that this is gonna turn out very differently from what other people are, are thinking. There's also, to do with that, when you peak, other people really want to peak, even if they've only got one more use of their peak left, and then they're not going to be able to in any future round. Well, people really want to know what those cards are, because if one person knows, it often starts like a flourish of people going, well, I want to look as well. Ooh, that's what that is, sort of thing. So you never want to be without the information that others have. And you can probably tell from the way I'm talking about this game that I've really enjoyed it. And I have up until a point. I'm not a huge fan of games that will eliminate a player if they're going to go on for too many more rounds. One of my favourite games, Love Letter, you can be eliminated at the start of a round, but you're probably only going to be out for about a minute before the next round goes. In Coyote, you can be knocked out and there can be many rounds after that that you're simply not included in. I would have preferred, and we have trialled it, effectively when the first player is knocked out, you then work out who is, who's got the most lives left, and then followed that by who's got the most peaks still available. And that just seems to work, for me, a little bit better because it doesn't sideline a player. But at the same time, I really like that core gameplay of being able to bluff. It feels like one of those cool games like Skull where you're bluffing even though you know. I was like, please don't challenge me because this, this is ridiculous. No, you've said a number. Good, I've managed to bluff you, even though the minus 10 is in front of me, uh, front of you, sorry. Well, you think you can see high numbers and you've gone for it. So there's some really cool ideas. In fact, in one game, I could see someone had in front of them the 20, but I looked, I kept looking, I went, I'm going to start the bidding at three. And you should have seen their face as they saw the rest of the numbers and were like, hang on a minute, what is my card? And that was just a really cool thing, a good moment from this game that you can definitely create over and over again as you bluff and confuse people with your bidding. That chance to peak, it all comes together really nicely. Like I said, Spicy is in the same line as this. This game does have that sort of extra shininess on some of the, like, the cards and stuff, and that is really nice. I think it just elevates this game as it, it just looks that bit nicer, a bit more sort of a, ooh, what's that when you've got it out on the table for people to maybe walking past, getting interested in looking at the game. However, as with any card game like this, you do need to take some care because when you're putting the cards into that stand, just make sure that you're not sort of marking the cards in any way because if you do mark the cards in this game, then you're going to know what your number is and that's going to sort of give the game away. However, if you've played it that much that that becomes a problem, 
Well, you've got your money's worth, first of all, but you could also then sleeve the cards and then carry on playing um, to get around that. Uh, so I wouldn't deem that to be an issue because you're going to have to play a lot because you're not really touching the cards that often. You shuffle them, deal them out, one to each player, one face down in the middle, you carefully put it in the card stand and then you're not touching them. So it's not like one of those games where you're constantly shuffling, touching, bending in your, you know, just someone's bending them as they're holding them. It's none of that. A lot of the game is played with no touching of the cards. As I alluded to, the sort of advanced rules are definitely the way to go. Yeah, you could probably get away without the sort of the loser being able to see their special coyote covered card. But the pointing really does make the, the challenges that bit more fun because it involves everyone around the table. It's not just, oh, those people, like that person over there has sort of challenged the next person and you're like, OK, let's see who wins. It's also a case of, right, who do I think is going to win the challenge? And I really like that. It just adds that extra bit of involvement for everyone around the table and keeps players interested throughout. It's not even a second pause of, oh, they're challenging. Let's see who, you know, who uh, who's going to win the challenge. You're involved in that challenge as well. And I think that's a really great thing because it really doesn't add that much extra complexity wise. It's just, right, a challenge is coming. Point at someone who you think is right. And then the loser does get that little extra information, that sort of catch up mechanism. It just means someone doesn't get sort of completely eliminated straight away. But I've really enjoyed it apart from that sort of player elimination bit. I think from now on, when we get the game to the table, we'll probably just end it when one or two people have been eliminated. Just so everyone can get back involved when we start up the next game. But very much have enjoyed Coyote. Let me know in the comment section below, have you played this or any of the other games in the same line? And well, while you're here, if you've not seen my review of Sweet and Spicy or any of those games, go and check one of those out. They should be linked here on the screen somewhere. And until next time, have a bronze shiny good day.